class is now in session. I am Professor Hockey, and today we'll be discussing the San Jose Sharks NHL Draft Preview. Now, it was just a few days ago where the Sharks were the winners of the draft lottery, giving them the opportunity to draft first overall at the upcoming entry draft, and it is likely that the Sharks, or extremely likely at this point, that the Sharks will select centerman Macklin Celebrini with that first overall pick. But just like last year, the Sharks actually have a sec- another first round draft pick, this time from the Pittsburgh Penguins, acquired in the Eric Carlson trade, and because the Penguins missed out on the playoffs, thankfully for the San Jose Sharks, they end up actually getting a pretty good 14th overall selection. And with that one, I imagine the Sharks will look to try and fill a pretty big need in their prospect pool. The top one is, you could say, goaltending. That's obviously a big deal for San Jose, but there isn't really a goaltender available in this first round that you would be willing to use such a pick on, which means they'll go with the second biggest need that the Sharks have, which is on defense. Because if you take a look at the forward group for San Jose, especially with the addition of Celebrini, it's actually got a lot of things going for it. It's got the high-end talent with Celebrini and Will Smith and potentially even Quinton Musty. William Eklund could even be considered in that group. It's got that middle six as well with players like Philip Bistet or Thomas Bordelow. So there's a a good amount of depth, a good amount of high end. The Sharks are pretty set up at that point when it comes to their forward talent. But at defense, it is definitely a good bit thinner. Leading the way does seem to be Shakir Mukamadulan, who could maybe at his best be like a second defenseman on a good San Jose Sharks team in three to five years time. But most people seem to project him as a solid second pairing defenseman, which does mean that the Sharks are without that really big number one guy that is so important to be a good and competitive team in the NHL these days. Take a look at some of the best of the best. You have, you know, Colorado with Kale McCarr, Dallas with Miro Haskin, and the Rangers with Adam Fox, Tampa Bay with Victor Hedman. That is such a big deal for any particular team that if you don't have that big number one guy you can rely on, you might have a few issues for yourself. The good news with this draft is that unlike 2023 where the defensive prospects were pretty slim pickings, there are a lot of big and promising names to be available in the early parts of this draft. The slight issue with that is that these players are so high caliber and so high have such high potential that it is very possible that many of them, if not all of them are gone by the time that the Sharks get to their 14th overall selection, which does beg the question whether or not the San Jose Sharks will actually try to move up, and I imagine this will actually be a pretty big priority for Mike Greer to be able to try and get done at this draft. It's going to be difficult because, of course, it is not simply a one-way street where if you want to move up, you can just manage to make it happen. You do have to find a potential suitor who would be willing to move down in the draft to 14th overall, but luckily for for San Jose, they do have the assets to really help sweeten the deal. They have their own second rounder, which is going to be the first pick of the second round, so 33rd overall. That's essentially a first rounder, as well as the second round pick of the New Jersey Devils, a team that also missed the playoffs. So that's actually pretty high up there as well. So if the Sharks could jump up to, let's say, a 10th or 9th or ninth overall and manage to pick up a player like Parrick or Bouillam on defense, that would be a really big deal for the San Jose Sharks and really help set up their prospect pool and make an extremely successful draft for San Jose to be able to pick up a player like one of those two guys and of course Celebrini at first overall. But with that, it is kind of difficult to come into a video and predict that the Sharks would be... Uh, moving up and then make draft selections based on that. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be considering the case in which the Sharks are unable to find a trading partner. They're not able to ma manage to move up a bit into the draft and as such will remain with that 14th overall selection. And so I will start off with Carter Yakumchuk. He is kind of in that group of really high caliber defensive prospects, but he does seem to be pretty squarely behind the bigger names, you know, the Lev Shunovs and the Salayevs who who, litter, who will litter the top five selections. Yakumchuk seems to be more in the 11 to 13 range. Snagging him at 14 will be slightly difficult, but I imagine if the situation does line up, the planets do all align here, and he is available at 14th overall, the San Jose Sharks will not skip out on him and will absolutely jump at that opportunity. He is a very good defenseman coming out of the WHL. High skill, very high, a lot of talent there offensively. He led the WHL for 
four defensemen in terms of goals in this draft minus one year and this is on a Calgary Hitmen team that really wasn't all that great at scoring goals so that makes it even more impressive big guy who's certainly not afraid to get into it he had 120 penalty minutes this past season which puts him fifth in the entire WHL in that regard which is not necessarily a positive but it does go to show that there is a somewhat high compete level to him as well he just really does have that high quality potential that the San Jose Sharks would be looking for out of a defenseman and while I do think he probably won't be available at 14th they will likely end up being selected 12th or perhaps even right before the Sharks at 13th overall that is an opportunity for San Jose to do a very small move up in the draft. You know, if it comes to 12th overall and he's still available, the Sharks could do a very quick swap with the team there and try to pick him up. That's definitely an option for them. But like I said, at 14th overall, if he's on the board, I'd say there's a 99% chance that the Sharks take him instantly unless there's some other surprise of someone who slipped down. The next on the list here is Adam Yurichek out of the Czech Republic, also a defenseman. He should have have been in that big group of top tier caliber, caliber defensemen this season, but the major issue for Yurichek is that he missed the vast majority of his draft year. He played a few games for sure, and he was expected to be like a top 10 type of talent competing with the likes of Olev Shunov or Silayev for that top defensive spot, but because of the injuries, it's hard to necessarily get that much of a read on him. There might be a team that is willing to take a flyer and end up picking him near the top 10, like at 11th overall but there might also be a lot of very hesitant teams and that will cause them to drop maybe closer to the 20th overall selection. So the Sharks definitely could be one of those uh, groups that decides to take the chance. If Yakimchuk is gone, the Sharks did not manage to move up and they really want to pick up a defenseman. Juracek is definitely a really solid choice, solid two-way guy, has very good middle uh, pairing defenseman uh, type of potential. That should be like kind of like a floor for him, but also the opportunity to be a top pairing guy perhaps not with the highest end potential though it's difficult to predict due to those injuries as the likes of some of the bigger bigger names in the draft this year but Jiracek would definitely be a very solid option for San Jose if they manage to pick him up there is also the opportunity if the Sharks want to and if they're willing to risk it to actually move down slightly in the draft if they want to drop to let's say 18th to 20th and still believe that Jiracek might still be on the board by that point that is an option for them as well or if they don't necessarily want to pick Juracek, they're not willing to take the risk, and Yakimchuk is gone, they could even move down a few more spots and still pick a solid defenseman in the latter part. But again, this is not a video for predicting that. These are really the two defensemen that the Sharks could really factor in in that 14th overall selection. Then we move on to a few forwards. While I don't think this is necessarily a huge need for the San Jose Sharks, when you do have a pick as high as 14th, you do kind of have to go by the philosophy of drafting the best player available. You really don't want to reach that much because it could end up backfiring on you. As such, the Sharks, if they get to this point, there's not a defenseman that they want. A forward is still a very solid option. The first one that I will talk about is a very interesting name here on the board, which is Cole Eiserman. It was only about a year, a year and a half ago, where Eiserman was expected to be a top selection at this year's draft, pretty much right behind Macklin Celebrini at second overall. And yet, over this past season, he has been leapfrogged by many, many names, which has caused him to fall potentially out of the top 10 and potentially into that 14th overall selection that the Sharks could go for. This is because while Cole Iserman has an elite level shot, perhaps the best shot in the entire draft this season, a lot of the other aspects of his game do kind of lag behind. His defense is not very good, his playmaking is okay, his skating is okay, but certainly not at the high level caliber of some of the forwards above him or expected to be above him at this year's draft. So, at his highest point, the ceiling there is definitely to be able to become a 40 to perhaps even 50 goal scorer at the NHL. His shot is really just that elite, but there is also the chance that Nat never really pans out. He's never really able to find a home in the NHL because he's not able to get the really solid baseline foundations to his game settled. And you end up kind of with a bust a bit at this point. So it is a, certainly a risky pick that has massive potential to pay off, but I'm not sure if Mike Greer is the type of GM to actually take that type of risk. At 14th overall, there are likely to be other very solid forwards available, and while some of them might not have the high, high potential of a player like Cole Iserman, the floor is definitely much higher than Iserman himself, and so 
even though the risk is there, I don't know if Greer will be willing to take it, but it's certainly an option. Then we get to Bennett, uh, Beckett Seneke coming out of the OHL. He is one of the highest risers in the draft, especially over the last few months because the second half of his draft minus one season has been really good and into the playoffs as well. Just been lighting things up offensively in that OHL. And so he's really jumped up, which has kind of made it so that his draft position is a bit difficult to nail down. There might be play, uh, teams willing to take him in the 10 to 11 range, while he may also manage to drop to like the 18 to 20 range, kind of like Adam. Juracek on defense because of just how high and how quick of a rise it really was through the draft rankings, but he is a very good player, a power forward type of guy, 6'3", big winger, so the definitely much more filling the mold that Mike Greer would love out of a player compared to a player like Cole Eiserman. Still has some pretty high potential as well, could very well be a first liner in the NHL within two to three years, and as a winger, that is probably the position that the Sharks absolutely do need. At center, they've got a pretty clear-cut group of uh, Celebrini, Will Smith, and Philip Bistet down the middle, and so a winger definitely could be a sort of secondary option if they can't manage to pick up a defense. Seneki would be a fantastic choice for them, and Mike Greer would be much more willing to go for a player like him as well. And then finally on the board here, we have Michael Bransig Nygaard, if I am present, uh, pronouncing that correctly. He is probably one of the safest options that you can end up with at 14th overall. Most mock drafts experience him to go pretty much in that exact range. He doesn't really seem to have like, oh, he could go into that top 10 or, oh, he might fall down to 20th. He's just an extremely solid player. One of the most steady and consistent players in the draft this season. Uh, Perhaps the most defensively minded winger in the draft as well just generally brings a sort of of jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none type of situation to the team that drafts him. Kind of the opposite, in a way, of Cole Iserman, who has that elite shot, but the other parts of his game do lag behind. Nygaard just does everything pretty well. His shot is good, his playmaking is solid, his defensive game is good, his compete level is quite solid as well. He's uh, willing to sacrifice for his own team. He just does a lot of things very good, and any team would be absolutely ecstatic to have him. The major issue, if you could really call it that when it comes to Nygaard is the fact that he doesn't necessarily have that super high quality potential. You're not necessarily expecting him to become a point per game player in the NHL in the future, not necessarily a first line player either, but you're going to have a pretty solid chance that if you pick this guy, he'll end up becoming like a 50 point scorer in your middle six in the NHL. Do the Sharks want another player like that? Perhaps Mike Greer might feel sort of safe just taking a player of his caliber at 14th overall and being relatively happy with that type of selection. And so it's probably the safest option on the board here for this video. But If the Sharks want to take a flyer on somebody else, there are certainly not a lack of options in that regard. But like I said, it is very, very probable that the Sharks will come in with the idea of trying to trade up, with the idea of trying to pick up a defenseman that is their biggest need besides goaltender in their prospect pool. And so if Yakem Chuck is not available and they're not able to move up, then maybe they'll end up taking a forward. But at this point, defense does seem to be in the cards for the San Jose Sharks. Class dismissed.